I invited the neighbours over to play test. What's happening, kiddos? I'm going to try and make it. Oh, my God. So let's talk graphics. But now it's time for the graphics. 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 Yeah, alright. That's enough of that. The first thing to talk about is the use of render features, in particular the see-through effect for Bouncy Boy. Using SRP it's very easy to add this in, in fact Unity have a tutorial package you can download and learn from, so let's spin it up. Here you see the player character is occluded when something is rendered in front of it. This makes it really hard to control if this is a playable character. To make the character visible through objects, we need to make some changes to the pipeline asset. First, set the character layer to something. Next, exclude it from the main opaque pass. Then add a render objects feature, set the character layer, override the material and alter the depth test to not write to the depth buffer, and only test if greater. Finally, add another render objects feature and assign the character to the layer. Now we're able to see the character through walls. This is the exact method I've used for Bouncy Boy. The other cool rendering trick I'm using is stenciling. This allows me to effectively cut holes into the geometry without affecting the mesh in any way. As you can see here from the example, it is super effective. It really looks like you can just stick your hand inside that hole. So to do this, the whole mesh has a lid on top which acts like a stencil. This cuts the hole into the stencil buffer. Then the tiles use this stencil information to discard pixels that are in this buffer, allowing additional geometry to be rendered inside it. So as you can see from this wall of text, it's a bit more involved than the previous render trick. So I might just let the video play showing the settings while I list out what needs to be done. Create a render objects feature and assign the stencil layer. Change the execution order so it renders before the opaques. Override the depth options and ensure it does not write to the depth buffer and check set to always. Set the stencil value to one or another value if you have another stencil pass active. Set the compare function to not equal and if it passes, tell it to replace. Something I didn't show in the video is to set the render pass to only run the depth only pass. This will ensure it does not run any other passes that would be used, it's uh, just a performance thing. On the objects that you want to cut the holes out of, add the render objects feature, set the layer and override the stencil options. Set the value to the same as the stencil options previously and change the compare function to check if it's not equal. This will now be enough for you to cut holes out of the geometry. Okay, we made it to the final effect, the screen warp shader. This was objectively the easiest effect to do. It's a full screen effect uh, with some properties that is driven by code. Prior to using SRPs, to perform an image effect all you needed to do was call graphics.blit and boom the effect is done. With the move to the scriptable render pipelines, this needs to be done as a render feature. The blit feature doesn't come out of the box with URP, however you can simply copy the scripts over from the Unity example project on GitHub, I'll put the link in the description. For the warp effect, all the magic is the manipulation of the screen space UV coordinates. Let's check out what a UV looks like in a simple shader. First, let's change the apple colour, and as expected, the whole screen is now green. Now we'll map the UV's U, or X, value to the red channel. Note the red goes from 0 to 1 across the screen. Now we'll map the UV's V, or Y, value to the green channel. And I'm sure you've all seen this image before, right? So to get the pinch effect, all we need to do is squeeze the UV values around a point on the screen space. So here is the shader. 
It takes in a texture, which is the screen buffer, a float value for how intense the effect is, and a vector for the screen space position. All the magic for the UV manipulation happens inside the warp function. Insert mat here, output awesome screen space shader here. I'll just show you quickly what it looks like when you manually tweak the values. So to have this look good at runtime, we need a script to drive the shader values. I have this wrapped up in an async method so I can better schedule the execution of the effect. Also, for performance reasons, I only have this render feature enabled when the effect is happening. So the first thing I do is enable the render feature and then set the initial values for the player's position in screen space and the intensity to zero. I then tween the intensity value to a predetermined value and then reset it back to zero. This is the pinch part of the effect. The player then teleports to the new location and this time, when I tween the intensity value, after the pinch part, it comes back to zero with an elastic ease function, which gives it that bouncy effect from negative to positive. And then I disable the feature again. So that's a few of the special effects I have done. They make such an impact on the graphical aesthetic of the game. I hope this deep dive was helpful to some of you, especially if you are wanting to implement these effects in your games, or at least just interesting to watch and see how it's done. So like and subscribe and all of that rubbish, but please do check it out on Steam and Wishlist because that will really help me get some visibility out there. That's all for this devlog. Until next time, see you later.